Hello there. Welcome back. For the second time in a week. I know, right? Impressive. So, I'm sure the first thing that you may be thinking is, Fred, where's the hat? Why is your hair so fluffy? Rampant. What the fuck are you holding? And I'm going to tell you that all these questions and the answers to those questions don't matter. <coughs> because Bruce Springsteen. New album? Yes. Is it good? We'll find out. What can I bring to the table of value that you may not have heard on any other form of media? Absolutely nothing. Except for occasional memes. So, without further ado, let's buckle up grab any form of hot beverage, but in this case preferably a coffee because let's just be real, you know, like, if we're gonna do it, let's do it well, okay? Mm. That's good shit. And let's get right back to so, letter to you. Lot to be said here. Lot to be said. See, the thing that astonishes me, if anything, out of this particular album, well, there's two things. Firstly, I thought that Western Stars was going to be, you know, just kind of sitting there, just chilling for a little bit, because it just seemed, after the autobiography came out, music came out, apparently it was used for the film and such, so I thought, you know what, he's gonna take a bit of a hiatus, he's gonna chill, he's done enough, he's alright, but a fucking a kablamo, uh, this stuff was announced, and I'll tell you what, I'm very pleased with the quality of music that's popped out. In short, to what you're staying here, if you're actually interested about some serious commentary and detailed and well-argued analysis, it's very good. Please go listen to it. I mean, like right now, just turn this off. But please don't. I, I kind of want you to say it a little, little bit, a little bit. But then afterwards, go go listen to it because it's very good. And in a way, I've noticed that we're kind of having a bit of a theme lately because <laughs> Boomer Fred does not listen to modern music and very akin to the Bob Dylan album. You know, it's just an a new development in the chapters of a very accomplished artist from the United States. So in essence, yes, I really like it. There's three tracks which I fell in love with when I first listened to the first listened to the song. Well, actually four technically, because Letter to You on its own, I, I find quite an enjoyable as a piece as well. These particular tracks being uh, the House of a Thousand Guitars, Ghosts, and Song for Orphans, which are three songs of this album, which I can only define as absolute heavyweights. I've tried to read up on a couple of sources to get a general vibe as to what the feel of the album was, and I'm pleasantly surprised to see that my opinion is relatively shared, and I'm assuming and hoping that you as well will be pleasantly surprised, or enjoy, that some parts of your opinion, if not all, maybe you think I'm an idiot, tell me. Actually, don't tell me if you think I'm an idiot, because that's a bit rude and unnecessary. Um, but you can tell me if you have a different idea. I'll entertain that, but, uh... That, you know, and they ask wow. you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Stuff like this really, really makes fine, you self-conscious, so doesn't it? Yeah. Because they would never understand. Anyway, again, to some of the ideas I've found on the interwebs already, yes, I'm fully aware that it's nothing new. Letter to You just seems... very much what the title says an extremely pensive and self-reflective piece in which Springsteen has occasion to just kind of sum up all the characters he's placed himself in over the years 
and just come face to face with, well, as the song uses this theme, uh, with the, as the album uses themes quite a lot, uh, going through it actually, uh, comes to face to face with ghosts, which uh, I've seen taken as a sentence a couple of times, it's quite good. I'll probably link at least one of the articles down below, so if you want, you can have your nice little read for a little bit more detail and professionalism. But if anything, I'm just a really big fan of those niche pieces in which artists just say, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna say, this is how I'm feeling, print it on paper, bam, Bob's your uncle. And to be honest, that's kind of what happened in the sense that, from what I've understood, the East Street Band and Mr. Springsteen, known as The Boss, recorded the tracks in five days. So, pretty good. And to be honest, I can sort of feel a certain level of, I wouldn't say primitiveness, in a sense, in a negative sense, but I would use it in, in a relatively positive light, uh, more akin to, let's say, being unfiltered. Um, it's very much mind to paper, I believe. Uh, you get to see, you know, what elements of life Springsteen is coming to terms with at the moment. Um, I wouldn't say at the end, but in, in, let's say, the tail end, obviously, of a very, well, illustrious career as a singer, songwriter, rock and roll musician, um, poet, you know, or whatever you want to say. Pretty sure a, a good amount of positive accolades would, would apply to this band. And the pieces I brought up earlier, which I really enjoyed, for example, in the House of a Thousand Guitars, I believe it just followed a piece that had something to do with prayer. Honestly, you see, you see the pedestal with which he holds rock and roll, the, the healing power of music, the spirituality of it all. Um, how it offers a portal and a lens through which to just cleanse oneself and ascend to an ulterior dimension just that has nothing to do with the troubles, you know, if you're having problems with money, family, um, work, you always kind of get detached from the reality and that's kind of the value that we'll find, I wouldn't say all, but you know, a lot of people will find uh, in uh, music, well, rock and roll in this case. And you just see how this ambitious, bright-eyed young kid in a lot of these songs and a lot of these stories that Springsteen and the boss have told us throughout these years, you see at what point they're at. And you start to see the pieces kind of fit together and say, they've done it. They reached the point. Now what? And I think as broad as an answer that, I'm start, that I've kind of given so far, that Letters of You does, does start to answer these questions. It puts these pieces together and offers us more insight to the boss as more of a person. It's very personal. And that's something that I really appreciate and something that I find reminiscent, again, to Dylan's album. But I think that's the only type of comparison that should be made, if that makes sense. Nonetheless, it is an absolutely extraordinary album. If you love the boss, more of the boss. What's that? What else is to say? And um, that's kind of it. I'll be seeing you. And for those of you who are into the memes, slap like now.